There's two lawn chairs. You... Ah, my foot! Hang on. Why are you doing that? No, get in the lawn chair with me. No, because I have to. If these, if these, we could do That's these. That's so high up. Can we not lift it higher? Your whole head's going to be gone. This is like no, a real life high difference. Everyone thinks I'm five foot three already. Well, do you think better? <laughs> oh, is it? Hello, and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> you got to give me some prior warning. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go? And you didn't say anything. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am doing another team. team <laughs> <laughs> Good effort. Hello and welcome back to my channel. As you can probably tell, it's another tipsy team selection, and I'm joined by Ross because no one else is free. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'm ready for this. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you crying? <laughs> gonna be a one take wonder so we're gonna start off looking at my team we do still have some games to go we've got brighton newcastle to go so i'm going to put my team on the side <laughs> on one of these exits somewhere so you can see what i've got and then we'll just fast forward to me in the future and i'll give you a quick rundown of what happened so we'll pass over hello it's sober and sad me from the future um, on a positive note, Trippier got two assists, so there is a section in this video where we talk about Trippier not doing anything. He has got two attacking returns, so that's very, very positive, and I'm going to cling on to that because the rest of it isn't very good. Isaac didn't get anything, McAllister didn't get anything, Matoma didn't get anything. So I am done with my Brighton assets, I'm not in the best mood with them. And my rank has now flown up to 116,000. Thanks to Callum Wilson's 90 seconds of absolute madness. He has done so well this double game week and I wish I brought him in. I wish I captained him. This is straight after the match. <laughs> so it's not as jolly. But we'll go back to the happy drunk stage where I was completely oblivious to what lay ahead of me. What was I saying? Just read, look at, have a high... Oh! Edison! Okay, so we've just spoken to me in the future. We're just going to go through some of the players. It's really bad. <laughs> no, it's good. We're just going to go through some of the players and we want to start with Edison who <laughs> Ross benched and the minute Ross said in his live stream he was benching Edison and I was like brilliant I'm playing him because he's going to do well. What happened Ross? I still got the clean sheet from Raya but I don't tend to get the keepers correct so whoever I bench start and whoever I start bench and Edison got two saves and bonus points and I'm not at all salty. Nice. Um, the highlight of my team we're very very pleased with Luke Shaw. Trent, we're delighted with, got 13 points. Gahey, Palace kept a clean sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Palace kept a clean sheet. Matoma, we're hopefully, me from the future, was like, woo, we scored loads of points. Salah, three assists. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you need to give me some warning if you're going to turn to me. I was ready for that. Three assists. Creativity <laughs> three assists. off the charts. <laughs> nice. McAllister, I hope you did well. Harland, yes. bit of a flop, and I captained him. No, I didn't. <laughs> she captained Isaac. She's lying to you. She lies a lot. Hopefully you did really well. And then Watkins. Oh, I messed up. So I have given advice for the past week. I've said oh. bring in Wilson. I've said bring in Nciso. And I said bring in... Mitrovic. Mitrovic. I decided, well, my transfer messed up with Nciso, so that didn't happen. Didn't bring in Mitrovic because I thought he wouldn't get minutes. He comes on, he scores a goal. Great. Stuck with Ollie Watkins. Lump. But I think... <laughs> transferring him out for the next game week and then my bench is just fine no one got anything which is great now we will go into my transfers for this week which is the exciting part because i can ask for Ross's help and hopefully Ross will say something in this video <laughs> <laughs> what was that <laughs> why did you still own nico williams <laughs> You still own Nico Williams. Because of us, there's a few game weeks left and it's just a dead spot. I don't need You him. wild carded a few weeks ago. And after the wild card, what did he do? He scored. His points in the last few weeks are 0, 0, 0, 0 2, 6, 0, 1, I wild carded 0. Here. I wild carded in 32. He got 6 points in 32. Well, now he's got much. a jaw injury. So nice one. What am I going to do? Transfer someone new in and go, oh, bench you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. It's a nice team. You don't mean that. No, I don't mean that at all. You don't need to do anything. Oh, come on, video. Video over. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Ross. Video over. You don't need to do anything. But you've got two free transfers. Would you like to hear my thoughts? <laughs> no. 
This is my team. There are some issues. <laughs> I've already... Ross was very shocked that I still have Nico Williams. <laughs> I would like to point out, the week that I brought him in, he actually ended up scoring a goal, which is maybe his first goal of the season. But he was benched. But I'm still taking that as a win. And how many points has he scored in the last three weeks for you? He's been injured. He's had a bad jaw. A, yeah. broke, a broken jaw. <laughs> <laughs> a bad jaw. He's had a bad jaw, bless him. It was a really bad jaw. I'm not entirely happy with Edison. I'd quite like to bring in De Gea. Grealish, I'm tempted to toy around with either Gundogan, but I'm nervous about his minutes. And he played 78 minutes tonight. It's Champions League game, so he might be rested anyway. Plus, it's a double game week. Pep Roulette. I don't know if it's just steer clear completely of... My city assets, which means Edison Greenish gone, and then bringing some. Well, I've just said that I'm going to bring into <laughs> it. <laughs> I want Gundogan. He's done really well in the last two game weeks. I recommended him last week, but Pep Roulette scares me. So I could replace Greenish with who could I bring in? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <It was like, laughs> I think maybe you could consider Bruno Fernandez. I think no, but the, the... no. Who was it? I was gonna, who was it originally? Oh, Gundogan. I'm just saying. What's going on? What's happening? I think that the issue with doing Grealish to Gundogan or Grealish to Mares is you're just trying to predict Pep, and no one can predict Pep. He's a bald fraud. Don't, I never said Pep. Don't trust. Oh, what are you? What's happening? Don't trust the bald. Don't trust bald men. Whatever you do. So Grealish to Gundogan, no. Grealish to Mares. No, because you're trying to predict them. It's although Grealish played another 90 minutes in the Champions League. So it is a little bit tempting to replace him. You've got... Oh, I just remembered. Erdegaard. Uh, do you want to talk about that? I'd like to bring him in. <laughs> Grealish, so Grealish and Erdegaard have roughly the same data. About a 0 0.5, 0 0.6 expected goal involvement. My concern is Grealish gets benched one of the games and then doesn't end up performing anyway in the other game. Whereas Erdegaard, well, because Martinelli's injured now as well, so I don't know whether that means Erdegaard's going to be front and centre. He's performed really, really well the last couple of game weeks since I took him out of my team, actually. And obviously, Arsenal is such a solid team. They haven't really got too much to fight for now, but I don't know. But then does that mean they're going to take a bit of a break and they're not going to have that fire in their bellies? Yeah, he is their captain and he plays 90 minutes most weeks. So I think Erdegaard's fine and also they've got a really good fixture in game at 38. So I don't mind Grealish to Erdegaard, but I think I would just keep Edison use the third Man United spot for Bruno. So as a Man United fan, I've been watching the Man United games recently and Bruno is just, he's just due a massive, massive haul. So I'm probably going to end up bringing in Bruno for Grealish myself this week. So I think Watkins down to Greenwood, Grealish up to Bruno. The stats are pretty similar for XG, so they've both got pretty poor goal threat, to be honest. But Bruno is just creating chances left, right and centre, whereas Grealish's creativity is just relatively poor again. So Grealish's numbers have just never been good, whereas Bruno, not only is he playing 90 minutes, not only does he have a double and a good fixture in 38, he's also got better data. Bruno is also one of the people on that I don't have that I'm scared of. Mm. And I, the last week that was Callum Wilson and we saw how that went, not having him on my team. So I don't know whether... The problem is, I am going around the 100k mark. I want to finish in the top 100k. So I don't know whether it's worth taking risks and bringing in someone like Erdegaard instead when everyone else is going Bruno. But it's the double game week and, as you said, he's looking really, really solid. So I don't know whether that's a stupid risk to take or whether it's worth trying. And also, the teams that are in the relegation battle at the moment are suddenly on fire. They're so impressive. I mean, Forest are winning games away from home as well, which is just absolutely unheard of from them. So I'm not sure. I mean, Everton have their win against Brighton. There's a lot that I feel as though you could gamble, but I don't know if it's worth it at this point. I mean, at the time of recording this, you're 85k. And was... that's without the auto subs. I think actually it's 96,000 according so, to Fantasy Football Hub. I've been getting a lot of questions about this at the moment. How risky do you need to be? If I'm 10 points off my mini league leader or if I'm 10 points off my target rank, I, I think if you're within 10 to 15 points going into game at 37 or where you need to be, I don't think you take too many risks in 37 because all you need is one of your differential players or one of the players that your mini league rival doesn't own to smash it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're fine. So I think 10 to 15 points, you play your team, you try and get the most points. I think if you're 20 plus points going into game with 37 away from where you need to be, you probably need to mix up either the captaincy or a really mega differential and just hope that they smash it. So I feel like at the moment, considering you're probably in the game in and around the rank that you want to be, I feel like you just make sensible decisions. And if going into 38, 
your 10, 15 points off, then of course you can mix it up then. But I think you could almost throw it away by being, reckless. trying to go too differential, yeah, and reckless with it. So I would focus on bringing the players you want. And I feel like Grealish to Bruno, better for minutes, better for data, better for fixtures. If you look at the double, I mean, Chelsea and Brighton is not a bad double, but I prefer Bournemouth and Chelsea. Definitely. So I think looking at that, I would I would be very, very, very tempted by, by Bruno and for Grealish. And it does mean that you lose your boy Ollie Watkins. But at the moment, he's on your bench anyway. So he's I, let me down. I don't think it's a huge issue. I, one of the big issues where you touch on mini leagues is my FPL nemesis is 40 points ahead of me. However, this game week, he was absolutely storming ahead. He has Wilson and he has Estepinian. And I don't, whereas I managed to slightly catch him up. This could have changed now because obviously we're playing before the Brighton um, Newcastle game. But I managed to catch him up because he doesn't have Salah. So there are some players where I see them in a lot of the template teams on Twitter and things, whereas actually mini leagues are a completely different ball game. Do you care more about your overall rank or have you got a mini league that you're determined to be number one in? I was going to say that. I think at certain stage, I mean, for me all season it's overall rank because we're content creators and no, no oh, one... yes. No one... Yes, you are a content creator. <laughs> no one cares if I rock up to my video and say I'm 700k but I'm winning my mini league. So I, I need... <laughs> I need my Where are you in the yellow league? I think the th 13th. You were storming ahead. You were top five for, what was it, first eight, 15 game weeks? Yeah, I thought I was going to win and then I turned out I'm not very good at FPL. But <laughs> I think at this stage, if you're trying to just like free you, you're 40 points behind your mini league rival, but you're currently inside the top 100k. I think you commit at this stage, you either go for your rank, which is yeah. play relatively safe, or you play for your mini league and go all out and start mixing up with captaincy and differentials. But I think for you, considering you're an elite YouTuber, I think you should focus on your overall rank. You can tell by, you can tell by the deck chairs. By the deck chairs, you can tell you're a very elite YouTuber. I think you should be going for rank. So I would ignore your nemesis, let him have it this season, maybe, and focus on the overall rank in my opinion thank you that was very good advice so in terms of the team if we the, the other issue you touched on it actually as well City's fixtures Chelsea Brighton they are tough ones and oh, Chelsea if they have a good day I mean it's Chelsea away from home so I'm not quite sure how they'll perform really but I am very, very tempted, Edison to De Gea, and I should have done that on my wild card. But I remember sitting in the O2 Arena with a, a content creator who told me De Gea doesn't make saves. De Gea is a terrible choice. Go for Edison. Explain that one. I think Edison is fantastic, and I think he's an excellent goalkeeper. I won't own him next season myself, but if you want to go for it, go. I feel like Edison is fine for this double. Yeah, I feel it's like not Bru worth taking Bruno, Bruno is quite high upside, but then the thing is, Edison doesn't tend to make many saves, so. I don't know. I feel like let's maybe see the press conferences. I just feel like Grealish being favoured in the Champions League. City pretty much wrapping up the league. I would be shocked to see Grealish start both and get good minutes in both. So I think he starts one, even in that one. He's, I, I think he'll get 80 to 100 minutes combined. Bruno will get you 180 minutes and they're good fixtures. And he's got a good fixture in 38. I mean, yeah. I'm talking myself and yourself into it because at the moment I want Bruno in my team. And I just think I, I, I'm big on stats. He's got a 0 0.9 XG, XGI post World Cup, but also he passes the eye test. And I just feel like if you're a Man United fan and you're watching this, you would have seen in recent weeks, he's been so close to a big score. And I think that's mm -hmm. coming. So for me, I just feel like because you don't need Watkins anyway, because Grealish is a minutes risk and because Edison should fingers crossed start both or, or take a good start one, I think I'd... I'd be leaning towards Grealish to Fernandez, and, and obviously Rashford is back in training now, so which hopefully. is such a relief. Yeah. And this is the thing: I think I had the Erdegaard idea because I thought Rashford was going to be out, so I thought I was going to have that player yeah. that I could play around with. And it's a bit annoying. I don't know if you've had the same thing, but I feel as though my midfield for the last couple of weeks has been so strong. I've actually not got any room to manoeuvre because I would love to have double Arsenal assets. I had um, Martinelli and Erdegaard for absolute ages and then it was in the wild card because they didn't have as many doubles. I got rid of them. Yeah. With hindsight, was that a mistake? It might have been, but I do chase the doubles as I think most people do because you think the odds are that you're going to score higher. But we've seen some hauls from them. So yeah. that's probably something to take into next season. I think if this is your first season playing FPL as well, it's very rare that we have what we had this season where mm -hmm. Brighton, City and United had doubles in three of the, all three of the final weeks and Brighton had another double. You don't usually get teams that have consecutive doubles. So you usually change them around. But if you've had Brighton, City and United midfielders, 
you, you can't take them out because they've doubled in every single double and it, it's made it a bit of a stale into the season. So if this is your first season, next season I can guarantee it won't be the same. And in this situation, you have midfield spots to switch around where, and I think midfield is the highest upside position where that's mm-hmm. where the points are scored. So yeah, it's a bit been a bit boring, but I feel like there's only two weeks left now. Don't take players out for the sake of it. If you're happy with your rank, play defensive. If you need to go for it, just take a fun punt and trust your gut feeling with it. And this is the problem. I'm, next season, I want to take in the fact that I don't have to make transfers just because I have them. Because yeah. there are a lot of players at the start of the season that I took out just for the sake of it because I thought I'd maybe use my transfer. Realistically, looking at performance of my team, the biggest red flag really is Trippier. We've seen nothing from him. Yeah. But I'm still terrified to take him out. And I'm just expecting... I mean, Leicester at home, surely he's going to have something in him because it's just been such a flop recently. It's one of the... And again, but if you look at... So it's such a difficult one because if you look at the data, mm. they are actually a better defence post-World Cup and Trippier's data is better from an attacking perspective. So what happened pre-World Cup is Trippier massively overperformed how we expected. Mm. And then post-World Cup, he's massively underperformed. And this is the issue with data is it's a good predictor, but it doesn't necessarily predict exactly what's going to happen. So I'm not going to sell Trippier. I may end up benching him this week, though, because a lot of us have to choose between Trent and Trippier. But yeah, it's one of those where sometimes if you jump off a heavily owned asset, it can be fruitful. And I guess if you're struggling for the final two weeks, selling someone like a Trippier or Trent I guess is worth the risk, but for me, they're just such good assets and the data supports that they will get a, a returns eventually. If you do sell Trippier though, buy Ben Me. That's my advice. Ben Me has been... Ben Me getting ben a... Pl- oh. 11 points did he get? M- madness. Oh, Ben Me. I'm, I'm currently commissioning a mural to go on here for just Ben Me. I agree. Uh, that is that guy. I don't know why I took him out of my team, but I did. So let's have let's show what we think my team is going to look like for the next game week. This is what I'm planning. So you have persuaded me on Bruno, unless I change my mind last minute and have a panic. Yeah. Edison to Tejia. You can't do I that can't again, do. Bruno. Yeah. So this Rats. is the issue. I think it's one of those where we're recording this obviously before the press conferences. So if the press conferences suggest that Grealish might get a start or Pep's going to go full shrink for the final two then then maybe but I just feel like with Bruno you know yeah, and, and he's on penalties now. yeah so I feel like Edison and Bruno for me is a slightly better combo than De Gea and Grealish but let us know down below in the comments do you prefer Edison and Grealish um, Edison and Bruno as a combo or De Gea and Grealish because I feel like you've got to probably move for a third United asset with Bournemouth, Chelsea and Fulham it's just which direction you go in there I suppose and you don't probably need to touch your bench too much I suppose the other thing to note is if you do Edison to De Gea, that's one transfer, mm-hmm. which would leave you two for the final week. If you do Grealish to Bruno, you have to use both. So that is, I guess, De Gea is technically saving you four points. Yeah, it is a tough one. I think also let us know in the comments if you're planning to take any hits and if you're planning to just throw the kitchen sink at the rest of the season and bring in some differentials. Because I said last week I would bring in Gibbs White because he's been involved in all of Forrest's goals and then he wasn't involved in a single goal last game week, which is typical. But there are some players that I would love to take a punt on, but I think you're right. I need to play it relatively safe, do the sensible thing and hopefully, fingers crossed, finish in the top 100k. I believe in you. I I'm think that was excellent. Sweating. I'm proud of us. <laughs> so guys, there you have it. That's... <laughs> I can do your outro. Yeah, go on. So guys, there you have it. That is our game week 37. No, our, that's not our. This is our team now. So guys, there you have it. That is Yelena's game week 37 team selection. Do make sure to like and subscribe. Let's go for... Oh no, don't, because if it doesn't get this, it'll Let's be really go sad. for 250 likes on this video. Make sure you subscribe as well. Yelena is on the road to 5,000 subscribers. <laughs> Just, yeah, on the, on, I'm technically going on the road to 100,000. Yelena is on the long road to 100,000 subscribers, so make sure to subscribe, make sure to like. There will be plenty of content throughout the remainder of the season. Also yes. going into next season as well, we've got some pretty exciting collaborations and ideas for pre-season content. So make sure to like, comment down below for the algorithm, Grobs. Gross. <laughs> Comment down below for the algorithm. I'm not good enough gods. for the algorithm god yet. Just be gross. Subscribe. Oh, subscribe to Ross as well. Help him out. Yeah, I need help. Please, love me. And bye. Thank you for watching.